Hello and welcome to another edition of the Silent Sports Video Blog. This is episode 13 and the date is June 24th, 2017. Thanks as always, I'm Troy West. Um, before I get started, I want to thank everyone who did actually watch my video last week. It was sort of a um, special video that I did as I opened up about myself and some of the personal trials and tribulations I went through and how I feel about certain things. I thank the people that watched. Um, I thank the views got up to 15. Um, I did send a link out. I normally doesn't send a link out to my uh, blog, but I did this time because there were certain special people. Well, I deemed them as special, and that's why I said that last week. Um, I wanted them to see it. Um, I don't know if... I really only got really one sincere reach out, um, which was by my best friend, and I thank her very much. Um, she actually did uh, watch and listen. Some people did reach out, but they complain more about the music in the background, which I apologize for. I can't do nothing about it. This is a game, actually, that I'm using to record um, these videos with. That's why I had my microphone in today. Hopefully. The sound is better. I did a little test before. It sounded a little bit better, so hopefully my voice will come through a lot better this time. But um, I still felt like if you really wanted to listen, you still could have listened and looked over the music. But, um, you know, like I said, uh, I still thank people for watching. Um, I really, uh, I mean, it wasn't easy to talk about what I talked about, but like I said, it wasn't to degrade anyone else it was just to really open up about how I feel and just hope that people have more understanding of who I am what I stand for and um, who I am basically so um, so I was a little bit disappointed I didn't hear about that it was more about they couldn't hear me but I feel like that's just another excuse in my opinion you know, but that's fine. You know, some people I talk to, you know, regular basis, you know, I talked to them, but they didn't touch on the video. So I figured, well, either they didn't watch it at all or they just, you know, they didn't want to listen. So that's why I, I decided to do that because, you know, I gave the choice to those people who really wanted to listen to it. But I feel like if some people can hear it, you just... I mean, I know the music is kind of annoying, I admit that, but I feel like you still could have listened to what I had to say, so. But if you did and just didn't respond, I'm thankful for it, but I did get 15 views, so. Some of the people I reached out to must have had to at least clicked on it. I don't know if they actually watched it, but that's fine. Um, so uh, let's get started with the sports blog, because this is a sports blog. I know sometimes I get off track. And we talk about other things in sports, which I might do again today because I'm going to talk about Tiger Woods um, near the end of the video. Um, of course, uh, we will get into the NBA draft and some of the baseball things going on right now. And I'll talk about Derek Carr for a brief moment. Got his uh, big contract with the Raiders. And I'll get my views on him and that team going into next season. But first, we're going to start... With the NBA draft, of course, that was Thursday. Um, not a lot of huge surprises, especially at the top. You know, uh, Fultz did go number one to Philadelphia. Philadelphia made the trade up to one to get him. With Boston, who picked third, and they took Jason Tatum. We'll get into them a little bit a little bit in a few seconds. Uh, Lazo Ball went to the Lakers, which a lot of people expected that. Um, uh, Josh Jackson dropped to fourth. And I say drop because it was some friction between him and the Celtics. And Boston did not pick him, so he drove for the Phoenix. And round up the top five was De'Aaron Fox. Um, he's a stellar player from uh, Kentucky, so that's the top five. They said Sacramento made some nice picks, you know, that I heard throughout. Um, all the sports shows that I watch, but just because it's Sacramento, I just hope that it works out for them. Um, let's talk about that Boston thing. Uh, of course, the reports was 
uh, Josh Jackson was supposed to have a workout, and I guess he was in Sacramento. I guess working out for the Kings. I guess that's why he was in Sacramento. And uh, the GM Danny Ainge was flying out to Sacramento, but then on his way there, he found out that Josh Jackson pretty much canceled the uh, workout. You know, you heard different sides. I heard different sides, like people that actually worked in the front office, people that actually worked with agents were saying that that's more the agent's fault because, you know, Jackson was only 19 years old, so they figured that the agent must have botched it. But one way or the other, um, Boston didn't take him, and it's probably mainly for that reason. Um, Daddy A sort of touched on it jokingly, but he said he was really upset when he canceled that um, workout, so... And he never met him at any time during this process, so I guess maybe he didn't feel comfortable going with him, and he went for uh, Tatum from Duke. So that's the story with that. But um, I don't know if, like me, I guess as a fan, I guess, um, and me not really having no inside knowledge about anything, like far as never talk to players or anything like that. But just for the outside looking in, I guess I should put it. If you, if the best player is there, you take the best player. Now, a lot of people saying Josh Jackson was probably the best player in this draft. But um, Tatum, he was a um, high pick as well. A lot of people dunk highly on him, especially his scoring. They say he's probably the best scorer that could score right now in the league. And Boston sort of needs that, so. And I think Boston will get the benefit of the doubt because of Ains' track record. He's been doing a good job as a GM, so. I don't think the fans will have pushed back too much unless Josh Jackson just explode and have a monster season and career with Phoenix. So, but time will tell. But I don't. Have, I didn't have a big pro, big problem with them passing on him. Um, I'm not a Celtics fan, so that's probably another reason why it don't really bother me. But we'll see how that unfolds. Maybe that give extra motivation to Jackson. You know, feeling like Boston passed on him. So. We'll see, that's to be an interesting development. Um, of course, uh, the rewards show, check that out Monday. Where the MVP and all that stuff will be announced. So the NBA season ain't quite over yet. That, and then the free agency, of course, ain't start yet, which I'm going to touch on. Um, let me talk about the Knicks. The, the Knicks, a lot of drama, you know, with Phil Jackson and the front office there. With uh, Christoph Porzingis, they shopped him supposedly this week. Well, took calls. For him this week. Um, now I'm, I'm like I said, I'm the guy. I'm an open-minded person, so I'm sort of always sound like I'm on the fence. I don't think they should trade Porzingis. Like I wouldn't, like deep down, wouldn't trade him. But if it was, if I got a good offer, he's not untouchable. Like in my opinion, like he, he's a great player. He's a one of a lifetime player. Seven three can put the ball on the floor, shoot, uh, protect the rim. But, I mean, he, I mean, he's not all the way proven yet. So, if I got a good deal with maybe some other draft picks and a known veteran or a known, uh, I wouldn't say a star, but just somebody that you know what you're going to get out of him, I probably would at least thought about it. Not said I would have did the trade. But just because of uh, the Phil Jackson's track record so far and, the hype of New York for one, another thing, and just how bad the Knicks has been over years. Like, every move you make is going to be magnified. And I mean, I think he should get some pushback for this, but not too much, because I feel like, like I said, if he didn't got a great deal, why not at least listen to it? So I don't I think this is somewhat a little bit overblown, a little bit, you know, took a out of context a little bit, but just, I mean, you are who you are, and he ain't done nothing so far for the Knicks, and so whatever movie or make is going to be thought about as bad more than good, so been a lot of drama, hopefully uh, things get better for the Knicks, uh, basically they say Carmelo's going to be gone, he either going to try to trade him, or they might just flat out release him, so... And they would say one of the teams he might go to is the Clippers, which is crazy. I'm going to talk about the Clippers in a moment. Matter of fact, I'm going to touch on it now. I'm going to get to the Bulls and the Wolves trade as well. But I'm going to talk on that now. Uh, CP3 and Blake Griffin, they both opt out of their contracts. 
So it's no guarantee that both of them is coming back. So uh, Dave's about to get issues with the Clippers, but they just hired Jerry West, a uh, respected GM. So Doc Rivers still there as the coach. So we'll see what the Clippers do. And I think they're not afraid to uh, spend money. Um, they did. There were some rumors about DeAndre Jordan though getting traded. So, but he now they're coming out and said that that wasn't the case. But like I said we'll never really know the truth about that. So, but days in the West period we will get a lot of days is on the decline. In my opinion, the Clippers might be one of them if they lose both Chris Paul and Blake Griffin. They're going to have to start from scratch again. I don't think I'm going to have to go over there if those two not there, or at least CP3 not there. So they'll be on a rebuilding trend. Um, really, the only team with any certainty is the Warriors. Spurs have questions. They shopped at uh, Marcus Aldridge during the draft. They tried. The rumor was they were trying to get a top 10 pick for him. And then another rumor was out there that he don't want to be there no more because of how the season went for him. And how people are over exaggerated about his play and everything. So, saying the system, he don't fit the system or something. So, that'd be interesting to um, look out for for the Spurs. Uh, Kawhi Limit, of course, will have to come back healthy. But, you know, all their core guys, Parker, Ginobili, almost pretty much guaranteed will retire. I wouldn't be surprised if Tony Parker hang it up as well. Um, so, something, definitely something out to look out for. In the West, I think uh, Tay's got a chance to up and coming. Like the Wolves, which I'm about to touch on. And then I heard the Nuggets. The Nuggets had a really good year. They just missed the playoffs. They could score the basketball. They had some injuries. They got no kids. A lot of young talent there. They pushed the ball. Moody ain't they like to push the ball up and down the court. I think they were second in the NBA to score. So they'd be a team on the rise. Portland would be better, I think, next year as well. But all the teams that was in the playoffs this year, Utah, who could lose, Gordon Hayward. Um, the Thunder, they pretty much got a ceiling with just Westbrook there. They'd be good, they'd be in the playoffs, but they pretty much got a ceiling. Houston, they trying to make some moves for some free agents. There was rumors out there that they looking at the two guys I just mentioned, uh, Chris Paul and Blake Griffin for free agency to go along with Harden. But they're going to need more if they're going to do something in the West. But So the West don't look as strong as it has in the past. Now the teams on the bottom getting better. Lakers, Kings, Nuggets, as I mentioned. Phoenix going to probably be a little bit more competitive next year as well. So um, the West going to be a little bit more, other than the Warriors, it's going to be a lot more parity in the West. And I think the East is getting stronger. Uh, the White Howard, of course, you heard, got traded to the um, Charlotte Hornets um, before the draft. And they drafted... Uh, DRF, uh, was it DRF? I get DRF Fox mixed up with, uh, I think it was DRF Fox, I believe, they drafted. I know one of the guys was, one of those guys from Kentucky. They did draft. See, that I should have wrote that down in my notes. <laughs> I got my notes here, but I didn't write that down, so, um, yeah, so. But we'll see. Should be an interesting NBA season. You know, we got a long way to go to that. A lot of moves, more moves will be made in free agency. Um, I'm going to touch on the Bulls Wolves trade real quick. A lot of people are trashing the Bulls. Um, like I said, I'm an open, open mind thinker. I don't, I, don't, I don't think they got what they could have got back for Butler. But um, I guess, you know, when you, you got to make a trade, you got to make a trade. Um, Butler did come out and say he wanted to stay in Chicago when uh, Cleveland was trying to trade for him. But he wound up getting traded to the Wolves with his reunited with his own coach, Todd Thibodeau, who he thinks are very highly of. And the Wolves is another team that's going to be on the come up. Um, you know, Ricky Rubio's still there. I thought he would probably be the one to leave eventually, but I guess now they're going to keep him eventually, obviously. I uh, still got Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins, so they got a young squad. Should be a playoff team in the West, but I mean, there's no guarantees, but they're a much better team than they were before the end of the season, so that's going to be interesting to see next season. So, so a lot of things going on in the NBA. Of course, today's just going to keep heating up. 
So, um, of course, the war show is Monday. Uh, I think it's on TNT, so I'm gonna probably check it out. See who wins all the awards from the past season. Um, are they free days? They don't start. Am I? If my, if I'm right, probably I know it's in July. I don't know if it's on the first exactly, but free days officially don't start till after June first. So that's where a lot of days gonna start heating up. Probably more trades be made, more people, you know, people opting out of their contracts. So we'll see how things break down. So that's uh, the talk for the NBA for now. Um, I'm gonna touch on some baseball stuff. Um, and of course, just uh, the National League, you know, the National League West is stacked. You know, you got the Dodgers, who's fairly overtook in the Rockies. Um, I made a video this week. I did a, uh, actually a play by play video of MLB the show. And uh, the Rockies had the best record in the National League, but the Dodgers overtook them. So I had to put the Dodgers in the game against the Houston Astros, who's the top team in the American League still so check that out if you want to watch that um uh but seasons i mean like i said i don't really look at teams until after the all-star break but this year is a little different i looked at the standings this morning and really naturally it looked like it's a full of inclusion that all the, the three teams of the west the rockies the diamondbacks and the dodgers they will be the playoff teams and the two wild cards and then Will be one from the central and one from the east, like the Nationals. Going run away with the East. I don't see none of the teams in the East changing after the All Star break. I don't see the Central is going to be interested. The Cubs are there, but they still not first place. It's Milwaukee. I think the Cubs is still the best team, but really, it's no separation from nobody. Pittsburgh still in the mix. Um, uh, I think the only team that's sort of out of it is the Reds, which probably just fell off the map, but they was right there too for a while um, but pretty much every other team into that division is still there Milwaukee, Chicago um, uh, Pittsburgh and well St. Louis is sort of far away from it too I was sort of disappointed in the Cardinals so I thought they would be better this year but like I said still a long way to go but they still not like way way out of it so something to look at um, uh, over the American League, uh, of course, the West Houston is dominating. Um, they lost last night, though, but they still got 50 wins. They still, like, 11 games above Seattle, who they played last night. But Kane Fields was on the mound, so he was back. He just came back from injury. Um, and the Central, you know, still um, the Indians, I think, slightly, but uh, Minnesota is there. Uh, I think the White Sox ain't too far away. I think that's the division sort of bunched up too from top to bottom, really. Warriors been playing a lot better. That was my team to win this, uh, to get a wild card. I did pick Cleveland to win the division, but so that that's that's not over yet in that division. The East either the East is sort of bunched, even though the Red Sox and the Yankees are starting to pull away a little bit and. Orioles, man. I'm an Orioles fan. I'm a Braves fan as well. Like I said, I think I told the story before. I was a Braves fan first. I grew up watching Atlanta Braves on TV. Um, I was an Orioles. I mean, I always was an Orioles fan, but I was more lukewarm on the Orioles. I was more of a Braves fan. And I got criticized for that, actually, where I grew up. But, um, 20 straight games giving up five runs, and that's just... I think it's a tied the record of all time period in baseball. That's just terrible. I watched some of the game last night. They Tampa Bay jumped on a four nothing in the first. Just it was just terrible. Like the pitching has just been bad. Like no have no really no starting pitching at all. Our bullpen, I think that's what's hurting the bullpen. I think the starters uh going out there pitching so bad that it's starting to hurt the bullpen now because we had a decent bullpen. Uh, O'Day is back. He pitched a little bit last night. Um, Zach Britton's still on the DL, but it wouldn't matter if he was around because you you got to get the ball to Britton. So the Orioles been bad. They's now what? I think three games under. I think they in last place or tied for last place with Toronto. But Toronto was way out of it. They started off terrible, but they climbed back in it a little bit. 
Tampa is always, I mean, it's hard to say you're surprised. I'm surprised more now because Joe Man ain't there anymore, but that they just keep, like, being decent. I mean, they ain't made the playoffs in a couple of years, but they still be around 70, 80 wins every year. When you don't, you can't name, like, five players. Like, the only player I really knew from last night, and he's been there forever, is Evan Long Warrior. And I knew Chris Archer, he pitched last night. I think he's, I like him, but he's been, you know, he hasn't been real, real sharp. The Orioles got to him a little bit, but I was thought the pitcher was just 10 times worse. And it's been a problem for almost 20 years. The last ace we had legitimately is Mike Messina. That was 20 years ago, because he wound up going to the Yankees near the end of the 90s. So we ain't have a pitcher that's better than Messina as far as a starter since he left, so nobody even close. So that's been our problem. I've been saying that for years. I've talked to different people. I don't say I got arguments, but they, you know, we got a good lineup. And our lineup, sometimes, you know, our lineup is sort of inconsistent because while we hit the, well, every ball, everybody know that this year hitting home runs, but we don't, we don't put together innings. Like we just hit home runs. It's a bunch of solo home runs, which is not going to get it done. We got a lot of injuries, though, as well. Chris Davis is hurt. So, um, just hopefully they can turn it around. Still plenty of time, though. That's the thing. All-Star break is in about two, three weeks from now. Like I said, I don't really start worrying about nothing until after the All-Star break. You'll see who the teams are. But the National League, it pretty much almost looks set already, which I'm almost ready to concede that the teams that's in these spots right now, it's going to be those five teams, you know, probably other than the Central. Like I said, the Central, I still like the Cubs, but they've been struggling. They had up and down um, season, and I think they lost again last night. Um, so we'll see. Um, lots more, you know, I talk about baseball. I try to fit a little baseball in every week. Like I said, it's real slow during the summer. Um... Uh, move on to some football. I got some football news. A little football stuff going on. Uh, Derek Carr, which you probably heard that um, for the Oakland Raiders, the quarterback got uh, a stitcher worth $125 million and $40 million guaranteed, which makes him, you know, on a yearly basis, the highest paid NFL player in NFL history. And, you know, the debaters always do the person deserve the money, do this person deserve the money. Um, I'm not in the person that, not in that business to say if somebody deserves something or not. The market went up. Somebody's going to overtake him, probably another quarterback eventually. Um, so, I don't, I mean, then if you get money, especially in that sport, money ain't guaranteed. Um, I don't mind players getting big contracts in the NFL at all. Um, Derek Carr, very young quarterback. Uh, the Raiders on the come up. They made the playoffs last year. He got hurt, unfortunately, like, I think week 15, I believe. Broke his leg. But um, he's back. And uh, many caps and stuff. They say he looks pretty sharp, as always. They got a good offense. They added Marshawn Lynch, which is big. They got one of the best offensive lines of the league. Um, of course, you got Cooper and Crabtree out on a perimeter. To, um, they defense um, improving a little bit. Khalil Mack, probably one of the best linebackers in the league. But I didn't him, everybody else sort of uncertain. But um, and definitely a team to look out for. Of course, you know, they lose moving to Vegas in a couple of years, which kind of sucks for the Raiders fans, for the Oakland Raiders fans. But um, the only team really sad in their way legitimately is New England, but they in a tough division. Kansas City, nothing to see that. Andy Reid just got an extension, just to mention them. Denver is always going to be competitive with John Elway as the GM. Their defense still is stout. Now they still get their quarterback, um, quarterback uh, situation a little bit squared to me a little bit more. Uh, San Diego always they always a sleeper team to me because of Phillip Rivers. I love Phillip Rivers. I'm a big fan of Phillip Rivers. I think he's probably the most competitive quarterback I ever seen. He don't quit. I really like Phillip Rivers. He's getting a little old though, but they uh, they had a nice draft, so they not enough for the team to look at. The LA Chargers, I don't know if I said San Diego, I hope I didn't, but they the LA Chargers now, so. They in a tough division, but the Raiders still probably will be the favorite going in to next season to win that division and possibly challenge 
or give some type of chance to New England because I don't. I can just say this now: they'd be my team to go to the Super Bowl at least. And although, of course, we got two months from now, the injuries and stuff can happen. But right now, they, 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 they win the whole thing. That's probably who I'm going to lean on picking. So, but congratulations to Carr. I uh, think he does deserve the money. Um, only trepidation I got a little bit nervous about with him is, yeah, he's. He, I think he's proven himself enough. But he still haven't played in the playoffs yet, which somebody made him. Actually, my man, well, I, I'm a big Stephen A. Fitz fan. He said that, and I was like, yeah. I mean, that's sort of what I felt, too. Like, haven't played the playoff game yet. Um, the Raiders, you know, unfortunately got hurt before last year. But they probably would have won that game against Houston. But it wasn't a guarantee because Houston defense is pretty good. But um, that's my only thing with him. He's still, the, I mean, he's a ride, but still not. Like, not yet. I mean, people still put um, Andrew Luck over him. You know, and that's probably because he's been in the playoffs every year except for the last, what, two years, I think. So, but he's a great quarterback. They're a excited team. Um, I hope they do well. I believe they are. And he deserves to get paid. So, we'll see with that, how that all shakes down. And, um... My last topic I wanted to get into before I get out of here is Tiger Woods, of course. I talked about him last week, um, well, a couple of weeks ago when he had the DUI. And, you know, some people, you know, like I said, I watch a lot of a lot of different sports outlets. I mean, there's certain people that just, I ain't going to say they don't like Tiger Woods, but they just don't, in which I understand, they don't identify with him because, which is something I kind of forgot about, like, uh, I think he went on Oprah Winfrey show years ago, and basically, like, this is sort of a race topic, though, but, of course, Tiger Woods got black in him, of course, and, which I always thought was funny, like, if you mix any type of mix, but if you got any type of black in you, you black, like, you just call it black, no matter if you got white mixed in you, Hispanic mixed in you, anything mixed in you, once you get that black in you, you black. You know what I mean? That, that's, that's why I always thought that was kind of hilarious to me. But, um, but basically, he went on there and said, you know, basically, he's not black. He's, I think he got black, Indian, white. So he called himself black or some, some crazy word, you know, mixing all, mix all the races together. And like I said, I'm just, I'll be honest, I'm not as racially sensitive as some people. I mean, I think it's, I think it's a generational thing. Like I said, I'm younger. I didn't deal with a lot of racial things. I mean, I've dealt with it before, but not on a level as people probably that came up before me had. So it's like, it's it's hard for me to have that general hatred, you know, that some people have, that I know that's had, but I know most of them are older. So I'm thinking, well, they might have dealt with some things I didn't deal with, and I understand it. But I hate when that generation try to instill on you, well, you should, like, you should feel the way they feel, and I don't think that's fair, I don't think it's right, actually, I feel like, you know, do you know better than, quote unquote, the white man, if you have hate in your heart for people, everybody, you know, we want to be equal, it ain't that, I mean, you want to go to war, you want to be equal, I, I always say that, like, you know, how much better you are than them if you have the same, if you claim they have the hatred for us, you know, and I understand it. Like I said, I'm not taking away the right, you know, how anybody feel. And I just, I just don't, like it just don't bother me that to that extent it's about the other people. Like everything is not about race. I feel like people just sometimes use that as an excuse and instead of open up their mind. But I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not gonna blabber like I usually try to get off topic, but Basically, I want, what I want to say about Tiger Woods, you know, he, you know, news came out, basically, he going to get help, which is like a rehab, and like I said, um, some of the uh, reports said it was because, uh, well, because of his back pains and stuff, and um, he haven't been sleeping well. Now, that's the only part I can relate to now. I, like, basically last night, I'm up early, this is, I've got to be 10 o'clock in the morning, I get up, well, I used to work, because right now I'm not working, and that's why, um, hopefully this is not one of my last few videos, because once my internet go, I ain't ready to make no more videos for a while, 
So, um, but I just relate only to this simple fact that, like I said, I have a hard time sleeping too. And the only time, this might sound crazy, the only time I get a good night's sleep is if I have a drink or if I drink a little bit. So, which I did point out last week when I got deep into some of my issues that I'm having. Um, like I haven't, personally I haven't had anything, cause I don't have no money, that's part of it, but <laughs> I haven't had a drink in like three days and I haven't slept at all well in the last three days, last three, four days, right? So maybe it's not just, you know, maybe that's why he sort of takes the medicine because it's like maybe usually it knocks him out, makes him maybe go to sleep. But um, I just wish him luck, you know, and you know, I, like I said, I, I don't pass judgment on anybody. Everybody have issues and things. He made his mistakes, of course, in his life, you know, adultery and all that stuff that he did. But still, he, other than the DUI, I mean, that's the closest that I know that he ever been in jail. So, and I, I just, like I said, even though he don't, you know, rep, you know, our race, like maybe like he should, but I think he should a little bit more because that's part of the reason why I did adore him, but it didn't make me adore him that much less because he wasn't out here basically doing this for us, for the black, for the black people, for our community. But I still respect him. I mean, he's a champion. He might not never be the same Tiger Woods again, but I just hope he get healthy, get the help that he needs, uh, whatever means necessary, just to get back. It's not even about get back on the golf course, just get his life back together. And like I said, I sort of can relate as far as the sleeping thing, and it sucks, man. When you can't sleep, it sucks. So that's why I'm up this morning. I was able to write all my notes down, even though some of the notes I still missed out on some of them. But um, I just want to say thanks. Now the name came to me, Malik Monk. That's who Sacramento um, drafted <laughs> with the, uh, I think they picked them. I think they moved down in the draft. Because the Knicks, that was another thing the Knicks didn't do. They didn't pick, a lot of people think, well, he was there at eight. They kind of got, but they were for point guard for France. Um, so that was, so Knicks fans are going nuts right now. But, well, that's going to be the end of this video. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, my next video will probably be Saturday. Barring um, me still having my internet on. Um, if I would do, I will do another video next week. Um, like I said, not a lot going on next week. It'll probably just be more baseball. Um, like I said, MVP will be announced Monday. Look like it's going to be Russell Westbrook, but just want to see how the show going to be. Um, should be good. Just something to watch. Um, like I said, NBA talks will probably heat up as well. Probably more football things. So, or if anything else happens during the week, I'll definitely touch on it. Um, I want to say thanks, like again, I want to thank everybody again for watching last week, regardless for what you watched, what you heard. Um, I want to say thanks, um, anybody that support me genuinely, genuinely, I should say, thank you as well. Um, enjoy your weekend, um, and I'll talk to you guys next time, um, check out my videos, my other videos, my, uh, video game videos, pray, um, I think I'm getting towards the end of that. Um. I was going to do another Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 video yesterday, but I had a lot of side missions that I would do, so I'm trying to do all the side missions first, and I promise I'm going to try to get a video up for that. And like I said, Laws my internet on next week. Um, Crash is a trilogy. I, I do have it down on download. Excuse me. And I'll be putting videos of that. That'll be part of my retro series, even though it's a new game. It's still a retro game, it's just a remake, so. We're gonna put that in the retro series category, so look out for that next week as well. So for all, for thanks to all my YouTube uh, for, uh, subscribers, I'm back up to eight again. <laughs> so um, I want to say everybody that support me, thank you. I'm Troy West. Enjoy your weekend, and I'll talk to you guys soon. And I'll talk to you guys next time.